Hello everybody, Michael here for Tactica Imperialis with episode 6 of Codex Analysis Orcs. Today we are doing the heavy support section. Now I did say accidentally in the last episode that this was going to be the final episode. Rest assured it is not, there is still one more episode after this when we'll do the Lords of War, Formation and Final Thought. Speaking of the last episode, if you have missed any parts from this series, make sure to click the links in the description to watch any that you might have missed. So, the heavy support. Never been my favourite section. I don't know why. But I always found that I wasn't using it, probably because I was using fast attack all the time. But there are some cool units in here, some new, some moved, some just classic. So let's jump right in. Met guns, the updated big guns. These are artillery pieces for 18 points each. Why 18? I have no idea. So they are artillery pieces that with toughness 7, 2 wounds and a 3 up save. Meaning that they are pretty ridiculously hard to shift. I mean... Yeah, okay, two crack missiles and it's dead, but those crack missiles are still wounding on threes. And they are crewed by two Gretchen each. Weapon skill 2, BS 3, strength 2, toughness 2, 1, wound initiative 2, 1, attack leadership 5, no save. Uh, I believe you always use the toughness of the gun and the save of the gun because of the crew sort of hide. Or is that fantasy? I'm a little bit behind on artillery. I never use them, but I believe you just go with the toughness of the gun in most cases. There may be a randomizer for it. Either way, the mech guns are BS3, which is good. Uh, the Grotzer Arm with a close combat weapon, just in case, and the gun itself is a cannon. Now, the cannon is just basically a missile launcher. There is nothing more special than it's just a missile launcher. It doesn't do anything other than what a missile launcher does. Except, it's 36 inch range, so it's either 36 inch range, strength for AP5, heavy 1 blast, or strength at AP3, heavy 1, which is pretty solid. And at BS3, there's a chance it will actually hit something. Uh, I prefer the blast mode, unless I'm fighting marines, at which point, well, the solid shell is what you need. Treat as better than taking rocket launchers, because taking rocket launchers generally is at BS2, taking cannons is at BS3. You may include to four more mech guns each, for two, with two grots each, sorry, uh, for 18 points each. So a full-size mech gun squad of cannons will cost you 90 points and have 10 crew. Each mech gun can include up to two additional grot crew for three points per grot, meaning that if you have every gun with all the grots, you'll be paying 120 points. Each mech gun can include one ammo runt for another three points, allowing it to reroll to hit once. So on a cannon, that allows you to twin link your rocket, uh, for, and that means that will be another three points, but you only get one, and it's one use only. And any mech gun may replace its cannon with one of the following. A lobber for free. Now, a lobber's just a mortar, basically. Uh, doesn't do anything beyond a mortar, I just need to quickly find it again. Um, oh. I seem to be good at, when I'm scrolling through this codex, losing weapon profiles. I'm actually amazing at doing it. Uh, ranged weapons. Lava, sorry. It's because it's on <sighs> weird layout. So it's 48 inch range, strength 5, AP 5, heavy 1, small blast, barrage. Meaning that a full-size lobber squad will actually fire a multiple barrage, which can be quite nasty if done properly. And it also gives you a bit of a buff as concerns cover. You can also upgrade to a zap gun for 5 points a model. Now, zap gun is an objectively worse las cannon, as I look at it. I mean, it's good, but objectively it's probably worse than a las cannon. So it's 36 inch range, uh, strength 2d6, AP2, heavy 1, zap. It gets hot. So every time a zap gun is fired, roll 2d6 to determine its strength. After you pick your target, you don't roll the strength first. That's important. If the shot is if the roll is above 10, so you roll 11 or 12, the shot is resolved at strength 10, but the weapon gets hot on a hit roll of 1, 2, or 3. So if you miss, you get hot. If the zap gun gets hot, the wound is resolved against the crew, which is kind of useful. Um, zap guns automatically cause a crew shaken in addition to any other effects when they glance or pen. So that means that um, every time a zap gun does any damage to a vehicle whatsoever, it's snap firing. Even if you then roll an immobilized and you wanted it to stop shooting, you've at least made it fire snapshots next turn. And that's good, particularly with pie plate tanks like Vindicators and Whirlwinds, which can wreak havoc on your orcs. Problem I have is that you might choose to target that Vindicator. Um, and it's front armor 13 and then roll a 5 for its strength, meaning it sucks. Or you might get hot, um, which also sucks, but they are resolved against the crew, which I suppose counts as something. 
It's AP2, so it's probably going to be primarily used for vehicle killing, but you may want to use it elsewhere, and that is, as I said, a five-point upgrade. Then they came with four more new variants. So Lobber, Zapgun, and Cannon have been here since time forever, basically, but they also added four new ones. The Bubble Chucker. Now, actually, I'll just start by saying all of these four guns are 12 points apiece. They are the Bubble Chucker, the Custom Mega Cannon, the Smasher Gun, and the Tractor Cannon. So let's go and find out all about these new guns. Bubble Chucker. 36 inch range, strength D6, AP D6, heavy one, large blast. Roll once each shooting phase to determine both the strength and AP of the bubble chucker after the target has been chosen. If you roll a 3, for example, the shot would be strength 3, AP 3. You roll one dice and that's your strength and your AP at the same time. So you could be strength 6, AP 6, pie plate. You could be strength 1, AP 1, pie plate. Uh... No. No. That's terrible. I think the best pairing you can get would be strength 4, AP 4, because against most things, that's going to kill them. Against base marines, you might think strength 3, AP 3 is probably better, but you're wounding on 5s, which is not great. It just becomes like a glorified military tempestus at that point. So, it's just bad. I mean, uh, you might target a space marine unit when you could have targeted the scouts, and then roll a a 1 and not kill anybody, or then roll a 6 the next time and still not kill anybody because of the 3 plus save. <sighs> no, I don't like bubble truckers. Sorry. I mean, they're, they're really awesome and nifty, but weird. Weird gun. And I don't like it. Custom Mega Cannon. This is your sort of um, plasma cannon equivalent. It's 36 inch range, strength 8, AP 2, heavy 1 blast, it gets hot. It's a plasma cannon with plus one strength. Absolutely no complaints. That's good. We needed a sm sort of an AP2 blast weapon that was reliable, and this is probably it. So I like that gun. Good going. What else have we got? Smasher gun. It's 36 inch range. Strength D6 plus four. AP1 heavy one. Roll ones each shooting phase to determine strength after choosing targets. So you can't then, so you can't start by rolling the D6, get a 10, and then say I'm targeting that vehicle. Or you might, and you can't then say I'm, I've rolled a 5, so I might as well target that guardsman squad. Or character, or something like that. You t choose your target first, which might mean that your weapon is insane overkill if you're character sniping. You might roll a 10 against the toughness 3 character like Tower Therials. Alternatively, you might roll a 5 and be unable to hurt that um, land raider that you were shooting at. So it's very, very random, again. But it is AP1, and it's BS3, and you can get an ammo run for it, meaning it's quite likely to actually do the damage if it gets a good enough strength. So it's random, but it's a good random. And finally, the tractor cannon. This is 36 inch range, strength at AP3, heavy 1, skyfire tractor. Um, it automatically causes it immobilized in addition to any other effect when glancing or penetrating a zooming flyer. If a swooping monstrous creature suffers one or more wounds, it's a minus three penalty to grounding. This is really, really niche, but so, so good. So if you get immobilized on a flyer, it's got locked velocity, meaning it's never going to be able to turn again, meaning it's just going to be going on and off and on and off the board. And that's amazing. And minus three to grounding means that I believe uh, it's three plus is a grounding test. So you're only not grounded on a six. And that's fantastic. I mean, you can bring that flying monstrous creature down ready to be charged by your big scary mob of stuff. And because you can take five, you are very likely to cause that wound. Now, of course, if you're running in a competitive meta where you don't know your opponent's army list, these things might be absolutely dead because they'll just be snap-firing rocket launchers and you might as well have taken a cannon. But, against anything that looks like a flyer, they are your best answer. Like, even Daka Jets pale in comparison to this thing. And they only cost 30 points each, meaning that they can pay back their worth in a grounded and then dead hive tyrant immediately. Or a vendetta caused to crap cause to just go off the board all the time immediately. Mech guns are good. Tractor cannons are good. Uh, cannons are versatile. Lobbers are good. Zap guns are too random. 
Bubble chokers are bad. Custom mega cannons are very reliable. They're your most reliable weapon, even though they get hot. Smasher guns are good, mostly. And tractor cannons are fantastic against flyers. So mech guns are good. Now we come to battle wagons. My battle wagon. They've gone up in cost. They're now 110 points for a BS2, front armor 14, side armor 12, rear armor 10, four hull point vehicle. This thing is tanky. Well, that makes sense. It's a tank that's open topped and also has a transport capacity of 20. So you can get 20 boys in this thing. If you put a kill cannon on, which is a weapon upgrade I'm going to come to, you only have a transport capacity of 12, which is basically the same as a more resilient truck. It has... Um, it's open top, so in terms of fire points, it has infinite fire points. But if you put the Ard case on, which is an upgrade I'm going to come to, you get five fire points. One, two, three, four, five. Two on either side of the hull, and one at the back. And with access points, you have three if you mount an Ard case. Here, here, and here. Two, one on each side of the hull, and one at the rear. It has no weapons as standard. It basically, all you get is a shell. And you are told to upgrade it as you see fit. You may take a kill cannon for 30 points. This used to cost 60 points. And a kill cannon is basically a Lehman Rust demolished, uh, Lehman Rust battle cannon. It's big, it's scary, and it's good. But it's not as good. So it's 24 inch range, strength 7 AP3, ordnance 1 large blast. Which is alright. I mean, it's, it's short range, but you're probably driving up anyway. And it's a strength 7 AP3 ordnance pipe. Like the one downside is strength 7 over as against 8 means you can't instant kill marines, which is bad. May take one of the following weapons, cannon, lobber, or zap gun for 10 points each. Personally, I like cannons, but um, a lobber or a zap gun should also do alright considering you have a lot of hull points, the tank gets hot. May take up to four of the following in any combination. Big shooter or rocket launcher for 5 points each, meaning you can have up to... Um, four big shooters, four rockets, two big shooters, two rockets, two big shooters and two rockets. It, the combinations are pretty varied. You have a lot of combinations you can take and you can mount them in a lot of places. Like my battle wagon has two on here. You could also mount one on the roof. You can mount one on the top of the turret. You can easily fit all four on no matter what configuration you run. Uh, may take a death roller for 10 points, an ard case for 15 points and a grabbing claw for 5 points. Now an ard case is literally just gets rid of open tops. The Death Roller and Grabbing Claw are slightly different, and they are actually pretty good. Now I've just got to find them. Oh, jeez, here we go. Yeah, Ard Case, no longer counts as open topped. Uh, Death Roller, it treats its front armor as too high than normal when ramming. It's armor 14 already, ignore that. In addition, if an en Actually, do you ignore that? Do you treat yourself as armor 16? Not sure, clarify that for me, please. In addition, if the enemy unit makes a death or glory on a vehicle with death roller and fails to stop it, then they take D3 strength 10 AP4 hits. Plus, um, in addition to the damage, they normally suffer for the failed attack. Now, I used to think you just died when you did death, fail death or glory, um, hence the name, but it may have changed it. It's objectively worse because it used to be D6 strength 10 A AP nothing hits, and then another D6 strength 10 AP nothing hits if you pick death or glory, meaning it could do a ton of damage. Not so good anymore. It can also reroll failed dangerous terrain tests, but that doesn't really count for anything. 10 points, it's pretty good. Uh, grabbing Claw. At the beginning of the enemy movement phase, nominate a single enemy vehicle within 2 inches. On a 4-up, that vehicle may not move. Flyers and skimmers cannot be attacked by a Grabbing Claw. So, if you've got a transport vehicle that you're expecting to go running up the board, nope, grab it. It's not going anywhere. Or maybe it's... Um, a Lehman Rust that is trying to drive away um, because of units that are nearby. Nope, denied. So that could be hilarious. Um, for five points, I don't know if it's that good, but you might get some worth out of it. And then you may take options from the vehicle equipment list, um, which is quite comprehensive. It's not amazing, but it, there's some stuff here. Uh, extra armor. Boarding plank, which allows units, if as long as it's open top, to charge further out of it, basically negating difficult terrain looking at it, adding plus two. But you still have to then not take an hard case, which is kind of bad because I recommend you should have one. Uh, grot riggers for it will not die. Absolutely. This is a really, really good upgrade. Red paint job for extra movement when going flat out. You're probably going to be shooting. 
Reinforced Ram, if you don't like Death Rollers, you um, basically get the buff about ramming and you get the Dangerous Terrain reroll but without the Death or Glory thing. Five points extra for a Death Roller is worth it. Stick Bomb Chucker, Wrecking Ball. Stick Bomb Chucker gives the unit Stick Bombs. And Wrecking Ball is a short range strength 9 Assault D3 Whacker. It's alright, but I don't think there's anything particularly there that you really, really need. Especially because um, boarding planks don't work with hard cases. Personally, I think Bart Wagner got a little bit worse. Um, because although the kill cannon got half as much, so a battle wagon with a kill cannon is now 10 points cheaper, the basic shell is now 110 points, and that's a lot. Uh, big gun upgrade is probably worthwhile if you don't like kill cannons. Big shooters and rockets, I personally like big shooters because BS, uh, ballistic skill. Uh, death rollers are good, hard cases are nigh on essential, grabbing claws are good, but I don't know if you need them. And moving on, death dread. Um, discount Dreadnought. Weapon skill 4, BS2, strength 5. Strength 5? So it would be strength 6. Front and side armor 12, round armor 10, initiative 2, 3 attacks, 3 hold points. It's a walker with 2 big shooters and 2 power claws. Which is pretty decent. May replace any of its big shooters with a rocket launcher for free. A custom mega blaster for 5 points, giving it, in essence, a strength 8 plasma gun with assault 1. A Scorcher for a Heavy Flamer for 5 points, or another Power Claw for 10 points, meaning this thing can pack 4 Power Claws. You can't get rid of those 2 other Power Claws for ma maximum guns, but it's there if you want it. I think having a Scorcher is really good for softening units up just before you hit melee. Rocket Launchers if you plan to go tank hunting, possibly one of each, although a Mega Blaster does better at killing vehicles than Rocket Launchers, ironically, even though it does get hot because it's AP2. May take extra armor for 10 points. Um, you may want to do that so you can keep moving. And Grot Riggers for 10 points is probably pretty good. Grot Riggers got so much better in this codex compared to the old one. Uh, Death Dreads, I personally not use them that much, but they can do a lot of damage and be quite a nice distraction considering a fully kitted out one with two, four power claws and all the trimmings costs 120. That's still cheaper than most Dreadnoughts. Kill Cans. 50 points for one, uh, weapon skill 2, BS3, strength 5, uh, front and side 11, rear 10, 2 horn points, 2 attacks, and initiative 2. It's a walker with a big shooter and a can claw, which is not a power claw before anybody says anything, it's a little bit worse. Uh, da, da, da. Can claw, plus 2 strength AB2 melee, making this thing hit at strength 7 AB2, but it's not unwieldy. Meaning you get to hit before any dude with a power fist who thinks he can ruin your day by punching you. Which is good. Can claws have a little bit of value compared to power claws. But they're only strength 7. Um, cowardly grots. This is dumb. This is vehicle morale. If a unit a killer can suffers 25% or more casualties during any one phase, the unit must roll a d6 at the end of the phase. At plus 1 if there are 3 or more killer cans. And a further plus 1 if there is a death dread within 6 inches. On a 3-up, nothing happens. On a 1-2, to two, every model suffers a crew shaken result, but nobody loses a whole point. <sighs> That's bad. Like, anything to do with vehicles and morale stinks. Like, why am I... I, I understand in the law why, but it's just... Ugh. Basically, you want to max out your killer can squadron to a maximum of 6, but that will set you back 300 points. So, it's uh, is it worth the trade? Yes, probably. I mean... Six, you have to actually kill two before you can even take a test. So, yeah, I'm alright with it, but I don't like it. If you've got another Death Dread about, then even better. You can't actually fail um, if you have a Death Dread and a full-size squad, because unless a one always fails, that might be a thing. Any killer can may replace the big shooter with a rocket launcher for free, a custom mega blaster for five, or a scorcher for five. I like scorchers, as I've said. Custom mega blasters are better in here because you have ballistic skill three. You also have the grot zooka for five points, which is just like um, a kind of blunderbussy mortar type thingy. You know that really explained it beautifully, didn't it? Um, Eighteen inch range, strength six, AP five, heavy two blast. Reasonable. It's just a buffed up mortar with small blast and could do a bit of damage. But against some units, it's completely dead because, um, well, it's AP5. Killer Cam took, um extra armor for 10 points and Grot Riggers for 5. Neither of these are quite as good um, because you're less likely to want to be in melee. And Grot Riggers, you only have 2 HP, so it's less likely you're going to be able to use them. 
Then we come to two brand new units, the Gorkonaut and the Morkonaut. The Gorkonaut costs 245 points, which is ridiculous. It's weapon skill 4, BS 2, strength 8, front side 13, rear 12, initiative 2, 4 attacks and 5 HP. This is the tankiest vehicle in the codex, not just because 5 hull points, but because rear armor 12 and front and side 13 is good. 4 attacks, weapon skill 4, pretty good. And strength 8 means that even if it loses its melee weapon, it's still going to hit like hell. It's armed with 2 twin link big shooters, 2 rocket launchers, and a scorcher, and a Deathstorm mega shooter. Deathstorm mega shooter, I believe I talked about this in the news and rumors when I first talked about this codex, but nobody was going to remember that, so where is it? Uh, 36 inch range, strength 6, AP4, heavy 3D6, it's a super shooter on steroids. Average number of shots is about 10 or 11, um, and that's really, really powerful. So 10 or 11 strength 6, AP4 shots on average, could be as few as 3, uh, making it just a super shooter, could be as many as 18. That's ridiculously good. That does a lot of damage against almost everything. Even space moves have to worry about that just because of volume of shots. But because you are BS2, that 10 shots is actually going to be about 3 hits. Maybe 4. And that's terrible. <laughs> like you might think that's amazing, but even at maximum roll, you're going to average 6 hits. Which is good, but it's not amazing. Also has a Claw of Gork, or possibly Mork, which is a melee weapon. That is Strength 10, AP1, Concussive. Basically, this thing is going to kill every vehicle it touches, and it has four attacks, so it can kill actually basically anything in melee. And it's not even unwieldy, so anything with a power fist that thinks it can ruin your day is not going to ruin your day. It has a transport capacity as well, of six. It's not a super heavy. It has no fire points and one access point, that being the front doors that open up from his belly plate. Um, six models. Good units to go in here would be a war boss with a small knob squad. Uh, a three-man mega knob squad, or possibly something that relies on short range, like burners, because it's the tankiest way to get them up there. A small burner squad, or something that would do really well in here. May take extra armor for 10 points, maybe, and grot riggers for 20. It will not die on this thing is ridiculously good. That's why it's 20 points, but I still recommend you put it on, because you're just never going to kill this thing if you do, which is great. So Gorkonauts are good, but I think they get outclassed by Morkonauts, which are 15 points cheaper and have exactly the same stat line. Yep, exactly the same. So 4, 2, 8, 13, 13, 12, 2, 4, 5 hull points. Walker transport capacity again of 6 with 1 access point. 2 twin link big shooters, custom mega blaster instead of rocket launchers, a custom mega cannon. So this thing has a plasma gun, a plasma cannon, both of which are strength 8, 2 twin link big shooters, and 2 rocket launchers and a claw of Gork or possibly Mork, meaning this thing wrecks just as much face as a Mork, as a Gorkonaut does, um, but it's more suited to killing tanks because of its weaponry. It has options for extra armor and grot riggers. Again, grot riggers are amazing and may take a custom force field for 50 points. This custom force field is so useful because it's an invuln bubble. Where is it now? Custom Force Field. Yeah, da dum. The bear and all models within six inches have a five up in bowling against shooting. Oh, that is good. 50 points for a six inch bubble on an armor 13 vehicle with five hole points and it will not die. It's 300 points, but it's so good. Morkonauts beat Gorkonauts, in my opinion, purely because of Force Fields. That's what makes them so useful. I'm really happy with that. So Morkonauts to me are better, but Gorkonauts, if you just want to wreck face, are brilliant for that. Looters. Looters used to be elites. I preferred them when they were elites because they weren't in a really clogged up section of good stuff. So they're the same stat lines as an alt boy, 4, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 2, 7, 6 up. And they are 70 points for 5, meaning they cost 14 points each. They are each armed with a death gun and stick bombs. Stick bombs being assault grenades as we've talked about before. Death guns are 48 inch range, strength 7, AP4, heavy D3. Roll once each time a unit makes a shooting attack with death guns to determine how many shots all of the units will fire after target is chosen. So you don't roll a D3 per dude, you're a 1D3 for the whole squad. This could be good, this could be terrible. 
So looters just generally are good at killing everything because they generally fire a ton of shots. Now here we go, pointlessly. Furious charge, pointlessly. And mob rule, meaning you will probably need to upgrade one of your um, looters to a mech. You can take up to 15 looters in a squad. Full size squad will then fall cost you 210. Uh, up to three models may become mechs to swap the death gun for mechs, tool, slugger, and chopper. This means that mech looters can be quite easily embarked in open top vehicles like trucks and battle wagons to keep the um, thing mobile whilst they can fire out of it. Uh, the mech vehicle by Grow Oiler for 5 points. May replace chopper with a kill saw for 20 points. Uh, no. May take mech weapons. Uh, you may want a custom mega blaster or something, but nothing has the same range as a death gun, so I would keep him as cheap as possible. And the unit may take a truck as a dedicated transport. Bear in mind you'll be snap firing if the truck moves. Though this is not a bad detriment because you're BS2 anyway. So looters are still as good as they used to be. They're a tiny, tiny bit cheaper. But they're now in heavy support and so have to compete with Gorkonauts, Morkonauts, Battle Wagons and Death Dreads and Mech Guns. Which is bad. But they still will do a lot of damage for their cost. And finally, we have Flash Gits. These guys are Orc Knobs, so 4-2... Two, four, two, four, four, two, three, three, seven, six up, um, and then you get four guys and a captain. A captain is exactly the same profile, but he's a character. Snaz gun, snick, stick bombs, boss pull, and git finder. Git finder means that if they don't move, they're BS three, which is really, really good. And the snaz gun, um, I'm hoping it's got a little bit better from the old one. Let's have a look, shall we? It's. 24 inch range, strength 5, AP D6, assault 3, but you have to roll for AP after you choose the target, meaning it could suck. But 3 shots is better than the 1 shot they used to have. That's just good. Strength 5, AP D6, probably going to be 3 or 4 most of the time, meaning against anything but Marines it's generally amazing. Against Marines it's amazing half the time. But they are short ranged, meaning you might have to move a couple times before you can call on that Git Finder buff. There yeah, we go, Furious Charge and Mobile, because they can do some decent damage in melee with, um, uh, here we go. Wait, hang on. Everybody has a boss pole. Let me point this out. Every single model has a boss pole. And if I read a boss pole, um, each time a unit that includes a model with a boss, uh, no, never mind. Sorry. It allows you to reroll Mobile. I thought it meant you couldn't take damage from it, but that's just being a character. That's my error. Sorry. Uh, you can take another up to 5 for 22 points each, meaning a full score costs you 220. Each model may take an ammo run for 3 points each, this is probably quite nice. And may take a truck or battle wagon as a dedicated transport. Why you take a battle wagon is simply for resilience. The only problem is that they lost their heavy armor, I mean they're a lot more vulnerable and probably need a, something putting in here like um, custom force field mechs to keep them alive. And so, we arrive at the end of the heavy supports. Let's go back through and have a quick review and then we'll end this video. Mech guns. Some of them suck, some of them are amazing. I personally think tractor cannons, custom mega cannons and possibly smasher guns slash normal cannons are the best. Lobbers and zap guns are alright, the bubble trucker sucks. Battle wagons. Got more expensive unless you're running a kill cannon, in which case they got cheaper. Um, Generally just do what you should do with them, which is load them up with something scary, give them some big guns, and tell your opponent you're going to kill this or lose. Death Dreads are very good value, nice and cheap, have a lot of um, versatility. I like Scorcher, or two Scorchers, and maybe a custom Mega Blaster, and Grot Riggers, of course. Uh, killer Cans, a little bit better than they used to be, now that they can strike at Initiative 2 instead of 1 with their um, Can Claws. Um... I think you may want to try Grotzookas, but I still think Scorchers are the way to go. Custom Mega Blasters are better because of Blizzard Skill 3. Gorkonaut, Face Wrecker, does a ton of damage, excuse me. Apologies, phone rang. So what was I saying? Gorkonaut, generally good for doing a ton of damage, but um, it, it, it it's good. I mean, for its points, it's maybe a little bit high, but it's really powerful. With Grot Riggers, it will just will never die, hence why it gets it will not die. Uh, Death Storm Mega Shooter is not as good as you think it is because of your bad ballistic skill. Morkonaut, better in the main aspect of it has a force field, meaning it can or it can have a force field, meaning it can keep your units alive. This is so good. Um, Grot Riggers, again essential, and having a custom mega cannon means that you are able to drop pie plates or small blast pie plates, should I say, um, without worrying about your ballistic skills so much, which is good. Uh, it's more of a tank killer. 
but it will do anti-inventory as well because it has big shooters and the cannon has blast. Looters, worse than they used to be purely because they're in heavy support. If they were still in elite, they would be amazing, but they're not so good. You need a mech, which means that um, you lose a death gun, but they're still generally great value if you're in a small point game. Flash kits are better and worse. Better, their guns got better. They have git finders, which allow them to get better ballistic skill. They can have ammo runs, but worse in the fact that they now um, cannot get pain boys as an upgrade character. You have the captain, and you don't have a 4 plus save anymore. You have a 6 plus save. And that's the heavy supports. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like. The next episode will be the grand finale where we look at Gazkull and the Stomper, the Lords of War, and we'll also do the Orc Warband formation, as well as my final thoughts on the Orc Codex. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Make sure to leave a like and share it wherever you do, if you did, and any comments down below would be much appreciated. My name is Michael for Tactica Imperialis, and I will see you all again.